Hello again, everyone. It's me, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. We're talking about rocket artillery. Now, me being a field artillery gunner, I have a uh, obviously a bit of a soft spot for my field guns and howitzers. But of course, rocket artillery truly is becoming part of the future state of modern artillery. It really is. I mean, you're looking at the conflicts going on around in the world right now, which of course, you know, I cannot talk about. Uh, the rocket artillery is predominantly taking the battlefield effect. We're talking specifically today about the M142 High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, otherwise known as the HIMARS. Now, the HIMARS has a very, very high value request across the world right now because what we're starting to find is that rocket artillery is as i mentioned before becoming very prominent but also extremely long range and extremely high mobility including the high mars ability to uh, take different types of munition whether it be uh, you know gps guided rockets standard conventional rockets uh, but it's pure speed and deployment is really what sets this vehicle apart from some other vehicles out there we obviously do have the mlrs standard track vehicle that is used across the uh, the NATO spectrum as well, which we also see going across to other countries. But HIMARS is a little bit different. We're going to talk a little bit about how it's different today and some of its capabilities that set it aside from its tracked counterparts. So this vehicle is a US light roll multiple launch rocket system mounted on the standard army medium tactical vehicle or MTV truck frame. The system was developed in the late 1990s and has been in service since 2005. The HIMARS was developed for the needs of the US Armed Forces by BAA Systems and Lockheed Martin. When creating the new system, the focus was put on the greatest possible mobility, high maximum speed of a wheeled platform, and the possibility of being air transported by a C-130 Hercules aircraft. In order to increase its compatibility and shorten the research and development as much as possible, it was decided to use the wheeled platform based on the truck from the M1078 FMTV family, while the missile launcher was borrowed from the M270 MLRS, its tracked variant. It was worth adding that while the MLRS has two launchers with six each, the HIMARS only uses one, with the six tubes being able to launch a multitude of different rockets that the MLRS can. The first field tests of the M142 began in 1998, with an order of the first production batch placed in 2002. Launches of this type were used during the civil war in Syria and started in 2011, and in operations in Iraq starting in 2014. The weaponry was also used in Afghanistan in 2010, helping to strengthen the NATO offensive in Kandahar against the Taliban. It was later used to kill 50 Taliban fighters in Muskala in Afghanistan in 2018. I actually served uh, in Afghanistan in Musakala and it's a nasty place to be. A lot of undulating valleys, coolies, but also a lot of flat, flat terrain for basically rockets to do the most amount of damage. And also, because Musakala is a built-up area, they wanted to precision guide a lot of the GMLRS or guided multiple launch rocket systems into uh, the targets throughout there. And I was actually based in uh, FOB Edinburgh, Ford Operating Base Edinburgh with the British Army uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and we actually had a battery of uh, GMLRSs or the tracked MLRSs from the British Army attached there. And I can tell you this much, when you see rocket artillery or hear it firing uh, almost 100, 200 meters away from you, it is terrifying. The sound is incredible. In fact, at one point I was fast asleep on top of my warrior. They launched a full salvo of 12 rockets at about three in the morning and it was the most terrifying sound experience I could ever imagined. Honestly, it was crazy. The HIMARS does carry those six rockets or one MGM-140 Attackums or basically an advanced heavy duty rocket with one tube for the whole pack. The US Army's family of medium tactical vehicles is a 5-ton truck and very capable of being able to lift heavy loads at high speeds. HIMARS is interchangeable with the MLRS M270A1 carrying that half rocket load so they can interchange ammunition between each platform. The chassis is produced by BAA Systems Mobility and Protection Systems, formerly the Armor Holdings Aerospace and Defense Group Tactical Vehicle Systems Division. The OEM of the FMTV is basically very, very prominently designed to create vehicles that have a strong basis of a frame structure that can be taken off-road without any problems going at high speeds with a heavy load on the back. The rocket launching system is produced by Lockheed Martin Missiles Fire and Control. The system has a maximum range of 300 kilometers with a minimum range of 2 kilometers. Although launching a missile at 2 kilometers seems absolutely crazy, considering when I'm firing with my 105mm howitzer, the charges we have inside of our uh, particular projectile and casing is very low, so I can't imagine what a missile would be doing. 
The mobile platform with rockets has a curb weight of 10,900 kilograms with a length of 7 meters and a width of 2.4 meters. The cost of a single HIMARS launcher is 5.1 million US dollars. Now while artillery that is towed can be set up, fired and driven away from where it is fired, like my own trade, self-propelled artillery truly is an advantage on the battlefield. Like High Mars, it has the ability for the vehicle to drive away immediately after firing, taking full advantage of that range and mobility to attack enemies and then escape retaliation. Counter battery fire is the future. Artillery is an extremely important asset on the battlefield course king of battle they do the most damage that is just the reality they do not take and hold ground but they provide the softening up of that area for the armored force or the infantry force to go in and take it out the reality is though that technology is advanced to the point where artillery is engaging at super long distances which is good for uh, you know being able to stay out of range of enemy targets but uh, unfortunately, when artillery is firing, it's quite easily detected due to the trajectory and the way projectiles fly through the sky to then counter battery come back, back right at it. So you want the extended range to be beyond that counter battery window of time where the guns have to track onto the position where the rounds are being fired and then fire back. With the longer range, you're increasing that window of time for you to shoot and scoot. And we've heard of that saying many times before in my videos, shoot and scoot truly is the future. We're not talking about field guns that are left in positions for you know longer periods of time. Uh, the days of Afghanistan will be a forward operating base is basically setting up field guns, uh, holding them in place and holding the fob is, is slowly changing the dynamic of battle uh, or the threat of battle today is really going into the basis of, you know, we need to fire as much as we can, as much you know, destruction as we possibly can at the longest range and then move quickly to do it all over again. Each rocket carries a 200 pound explosive warhead, which is powerful enough to destroy half a city block. A group of soldiers in the open are completely decimated by this and of course other artillery as well. And any vehicles that are unfortunate enough to be hit directly by one of these is pretty much gone. There is no capability of a tank or armored fighting vehicle out there today that will be able to withstand a missile of this particular variation. By firing a salvo of up to six rockets, HIMARS can attack an entire armored column or battle group, blast a hole through a front line of infantry or trenches, or cause tremendous damage to enemy camps or logistics that are not near the front line, but almost there. It takes only 20 seconds to ready the rockets, and within 45 seconds, all rockets can be launched from its pack. Don't let its looks fool you as this big lumpy tall truck. The HIMARS can travel fast on the field and on the road with a speed of 94 kilometers on road with a full tank of gas and full pack and can cover up to a maximum of 480 kilometers. It needs that capability because if you're firing at long ranges, you're going to want to move longer ranges to get away from that counter battery fire that also may have very extended range. The vehicle is able to cross wet terrain with up to a depth of 0.76 meters. Now the wheeled high Mars is more mobile than the towed howitzer, but it actually is better, even more better, than the MLRS system, the track system. This is because the vehicle has a very, very good off-road capability with the way it's set up. The wheeled system you would expect to be very, very difficult in thick mud or nastiness. The way that the vehicle is designed, the transmission and the engine power to this particular platform actually allows it to get a lot better mobility across the train than a tracked vehicle. However, I'm a tracked guy. I love my tracks. I still say if I was to put the high Mars against an MLRS, you put it in some really nasty terrain, the MLRS is probably going to take it over. But you have to be considerate of the fact that the MLRS is a lot heavier and it's carrying 12 rockets, not the six. So a vehicle that's lighter, although a little bit more top heavy in its tilt or tip angle, uh, the HIMARS could put uh, the MLRS out to lunch here. Where a skilled M777 crew of the 155mm howitzer might shoot five rounds in a minute up to 90 miles, the HIMARS crew can fire six rockets in just a few seconds out to a distance of between 20 to 40 miles depending on the exact ammo type. There are guided and unguided rockets and when we're talking about guided rockets we're talking about a rocket that can actually land through the windscreen of a car uh, up to you know 40 miles away without any um, you know deterioration of accuracy of that rocket which is just incredible to me even though the high mars is primarily used to fire rockets at the enemy the battlefield management system also allows it to quickly send information back to command posts as well as other platforms almost being sort of a centralized communication and information hub to other assets in the area this helps provide a better picture of the battlefield for planning and coordination purposes 
The improved launch and mechanical system, or ILMS, upgrade and electronics of the improved fire control system were upgraded from the MLRS 270s launchers and are fitted on all HIMARS vehicles. Lockheed Martin's Universal Fire Control System, or UFCS, was a further evolutionary upgrade of the fire control system, which has completed development and qualification to this day. From mid-2008, it's been fitted to a full-rate production HIMARS. Successful HIMARS testing of the ATACMS missile was completed in 2008, and the GMLRS were completed also soon after. This took place using the new GPS-guided UFCS. The High Mobility Artillery Rocket System is operated by a crew of three, the Driver, Gunner and Section Chief. However, the computer-based fire control system enables a crew of two or even just a single soldier to load and unload the system. The fire control system includes video, keyboard control and a gigabyte of programmable storage and global positioning system data. The fire control computer allows for firing missions to be carried out on automatic or in manual mode. In a typical mission, a command and control post would be transmitting the selected target data via a secure data link to the HIMARS on an onboard launch computer. The computer then aims the launch and provides the prompt signals to the crew to arm and fire the pre-selected number of rounds. The launcher can aim at a target in just 16 seconds, and it is possible for the crew to select pre-programmed multiple mission sequences which have been stored in the computer. This allows the vehicle to basically pull up onto a position, fire, and before it's even left the previous position have another mission programmed so they pull up to the next location and fire again. I would say it's somewhat lazy gunnery, but it's the future and this is where we're starting to get to as computers are doing most of the gunnery for us. Especially with HIMARS, the only real, I guess, ability you need to have is push some buttons. With field artillery, there's a lot of more manual labor and skill involved with actually loading and firing of the gun including safety, which with a system like this, there's still safety involved. For instance, you'll notice in some of the footage, the uh, crew chief is actually popping his head out the top of the, uh, the cab there with that hatch, looking at the rotation of that pack. And the reason he's doing that is to ensure that there's no troops, marines, um, trees, anything around that could be around that that pack hits. Because if that pack hits anything as it traverses, it's pretty much catastrophic failure. You don't want something launching with a dent inside of it, with a missile punching out the front. The great thing about this vehicle though is it can roll on and off a C-130 transport aircraft and when carried with a combat load is ready to operate within 15 minutes of landing off that aircraft. Because of the reduced weight of using one pod rather than the two, it has a faster time compared to the M270 from the point of the fire mission is received to the actual munition firing. There are 540 units produced before production was stopped in 2020. After the world saw the success of HIMARS deployment in Ukraine as of this year, Poland and Estonia have also placed orders of up to more than 500 HIMARS units. Speaking to the basic capacity of this vehicle, uh, I think we can say it's got a lot going for it. I mean, the M270 MLRS I absolutely love. I think we all love the Cold War era tracked multiple launch rocket system. But HIMARS is taking it up a next step. It's faster, it's more mobile, and it's countering against that ability of artillery to destroy it. Because as I said, artillery assets are absolutely critical on the battlefield of today, or the modernized a threat that we have today of artillery warfare, which is very prominent as you're already seeing in Ukraine. HIMARS is, is giving that ability to shoot and scoot, truly shoot and scoot. I mean, MLRS gets there, but it's it's still back in its time, right? It's still, you know, it's a system designed for the Cold War. Now we're starting to see wheeled vehicles with more advanced GPS and guidance systems to allow it to shoot and scoot really, really effectively. So I think HIMARS is a fantastic bit of kit. I do know a couple of people, uh, uh, both in the United States military and across the world, that are getting wind of uh, HIMARS being transitioned to other militaries around the world. And they've said, you know, uh, they're not a huge fan of it. And I think the reason for that is it's not because of its capabilities. It's because they want to be back on the guns. Uh, being on a howitzer is a lot of fun. You know, a crew of seven or eight people, a lot of teamwork, a lot of, you know, hard work and ethos to work on the guns. HIMARS is basically a, a mobile computer with a rocket pack on the back. And it, it takes a little bit of that artillery, uh, I guess, camaraderie away a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's because the system is bad, you know, uh, I think people I've even spoke to in the British Army that work with MLRS and GMLRS and, and you know, the operators I actually spoke to in Afghanistan, they love GMLRS. I mean, it's still a track vehicle, uh, still a team ethos, but a little bit different in the way in which, you know, our howitzers work with the M777s and the light guns with the 105mm guns. So I can see why they don't like it. But in all honesty, the system, if you look at it on paper and you actually start talking to some of the operators uh, in terms of its true capabilities and what it can do, 
it's very impressive and I would say somewhat of a game changer for modern artillery and we're definitely going to see I think a lot more of this going into the future maybe with even more extended distance rockets I'm not sure or more even more accurately guided uh, precision munitions from these kind of launchers. Anyway, I hope you learned a little bit about the High Mars today, and if you have operated on them, please leave me in the comment section below what your thoughts of them are. If you did enjoy today's video, I would really, really appreciate you clicking that like button. It really helps me out. And of course, if you want to see more videos from me in the future, click that little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of upcoming content in the future. I'd like to do a massive th thanks and shout out to those who have been supporting my Patreon and my PayPal. You can also go check out those links in the description box below. And thank you again for supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. I've actually replaced my microphone now so you'll be able to hear me a lot better. And that was uh, from the funding from you guys uh, sending to my channel so thank you so much for that also i do have uh, my artillery themed clothing brand that i'm being sponsored by and of course this video is quite pertaining to that uh, that brand so go check it out it's a tire for effect uh, they got really cool clothing on their site there go check them out uh, veteran owned uh, business so uh, really really good people go check them out and uh, i appreciate you stopping by again today have a wonderful time and i will see you next time all the best bye bye